Welcome back to the channel. Today we got the Waka Stoke. It's been a hot boat for the past few months coming out. Probably got it on about three or four rivers or so, different styles of rivers. So got a good feel for the boat. But yeah, here it is. We'll, uh, we'll go over the specs and stuff first. Lengthwise, it's about nine foot. They say like eight foot, 11 and some chain. It doesn't feel that long, to be honest with you though. It doesn't feel like a nine, nine foot boat when you're paddling. <clears throat> Width wise, it's 26.75, so almost 27. It does feel a little wide for me. Again, I'm a smaller guy. So. Weight, they're saying about 47.4 pounds, so almost 48 pounds. General paddling range, they're saying 121 to 198 pounds. And then their optimal like big water range is 132 to 176 pounds. Quite a wide range there. I would say that's pretty accurate. Um, my optimal range would probably be like 120 to 180. And now you could you paddle it bigger and smaller? Sure, but I think that's just my optimal range that I would estimate, at least for the boat, at least for me paddling. Volume is 92 gallons. It doesn't paddle like it has that much volume though. It does definitely paddle smaller than that and they they call it a creaker slash race boat on their description on their page it's called 15.99 retail and you can get this boat at Kaliva, two places at least near me in central virginia area Kaliva, and then also high water hobbies all right first we'll start off with the stern of the boat and then we'll talk about some changes they made to some outfitting and things like that the the stern is pretty thick here um but they did taper it in to be narrow so when you're doing those lean boosts and stuff like that it gives you a nice feel you can get a nice stroke and get a nice boof off the rocks there and it is tapered down in here too i'll turn it over but the the rail kind of goes up in the stern right here which is pretty unique little design pretty cool little logo i like the little flame in there stoke's a cool name you know pretty neutral name pretty cool name the thing you notice here, they have the three grab handles on the back, easy to get your hand in, pretty similar to like the steeds and stuff as far as this deck styling. But the one thing they, they have changed recently, this is on all the Waka boats are their grab handles. These are now much thicker. They don't flex, or, you don't flex at all. And they put this washer right here for added uh, protection from the handle ripping out. So I definitely feel a lot more comfortable with these handles than the old ones. The old ones weren't gonna break on you, but the bolt could have ripped through the plastic. This is definitely not gonna happen on these new ones. So you can feel confident, even though they're not metal, they're not going anywhere. Uh, the drain plug here, everybody always talks about the drain plug, but it's recessed, so it's not gonna get broken or anything. I don't drain plug my boats. I just sponge all my boats anywhere. It comes up to a lot of volume behind you here on, on off, off the cockpit. Which you don't really notice all that much, to be honest with you. You'd think it would be a lot to deal with back here, but it's really not. It, it paddles, like again, like a smaller boat. Same type Waka outfitting. Have you ever seen a Waka? So they have these nice built-in thigh braces or whatever you want to call them. They have some foam under it. They're super stiff. They work good. Nothing wrong with that. They have the two wing nuts here for your bulkhead. And then the cool little Waka side. I think that they added that. I can't quite remember that. I think that's a new thing to added w i almost want to say this is a little wider than before but i could be wrong same seat though same back band hip pads all this stuff works fine it's easy to maneuver if you want to move the seat 
just take that out and take the other one out and just push it forward or back. All Waka boats that I've paddled, the seat wants to be all the way back. If you put them forward, they slow down tremendously and they're not as loose and they're not as responsive. Put the seat back, they're looser, faster, more responsive. So um, right now I had them in the middle, but I've had it back and back is definitely the way to go in this and any other Waka boats that I've paddled at least, um, which are the Puffy, Garrett, and the Steve's. I've paddled all three of those, so. Anyway, the ratchets work good. Um, pretty solid bulkhead here. They got a little bracket right here that holds the foam in place. And you got two grab handles here in the front. Same deck, this reminds me just like the Steez deck styling here. The bow is different though. So this bow, um, the Steez actually rounds out a little more. This is really flat like down in this area, which I actually don't like. I think that's for me is a, a negative about the boat. And so if you paddle one, love to hear your thoughts on that. I'll go into why um, in, a, in a minute, but that's one reason, that's my biggest negative is this bow, how they flatten it out right here on this boat. So let me just turn it over here and I'll show you the hole of the boat. And just, just for you know, plastic, all Waka plastic is really good. I've never had any issues with Waka plastic. It scratches and stuff like that, but it's they're pretty hard to break. And you know, most of the really good paddlers that paddle Waka paddle all sorts of stuff and you don't see a lot of problems. But yeah, nice planing hole here with pretty good edge on it. It goes all the way down to the bow here. Um, kind of rounds off, comes up, and then tapers back to your edge down in this area here. But yeah, nice little sharp edge for turning and maneuvering and things like that. And like I say, if you come down here and look at the stern, this edge comes all the way back to the the back of the stern here. And then it kind of the stern kind of comes up kind of makes like a little U shape up and comes out. So cool little design there on the stern. I think it really helps again for getting on edge and coming off boost strong and making it feel more like a half slice boat than a full size creaker. Show you how I fit in. I'm again, I'm about 150, 510 if you don't know. And I got shoes and everything on, phone in my pocket, wallet. But this would be about how I fit in anyway if I had my stuff on. Fit in really tight in here. And I would have the bulkheads on, uh, let's see, I don't know, about six back or something like that. And I had to put a couple hip shims in. So smaller guy, but fit in here really nice. And I did not find this an overwhelming boat. I will say the Steve's Puffy Steve's feels way bigger like paddling than this boat. This definitely did not feel big when actually getting in on the water. It felt really good for me. Feels a little wide. Um, I like to kind of be in a boat at least 26 and under. After I get after I get above 26, my hips like I'm just pretty skinny, so I don't like the boat being that wide. But it wasn't a huge deal. All right, so we'll start off with the safety, comfort, outfitting rating, that type of thing. I want to give it an 8.5. It has pretty good outfitting. All walk-up boats are pretty solid. Nothing crazy, but it works. It's comfortable, and I, I think the upgrade in the handles has really improved a lot of people's at least perception of the handles being unsafe. You can say they're unsafe before or not. I don't know. It's just a lot of people just have their perceptions on that. But these handles definitely are not going anywhere compared to the old ones. And as far as getting out of the boat, you got plenty of room to here to step on that piece of foam and get out if you got pinned in that kind of situation. Appearance or styling, how good it looks. I'm going to give it 8.0. It looks, it's a creek boat, you know. It's not supposed to be like this really sexy boat. But I like the design of the logo. It looks pretty cool. I like the name of the boat. The deck stylings look good. It's a good looking boat, especially in that Fandango, like hot pink color. I also like the red a lot and the yellow. I think it was my top three, but good looking boat again. So 8.0 in that area. This is not really for creek boats, but I always do this. So playability. I would say an eight for a creek boat. It has that kind of shorter feel. So I feel like for free, free wheels and stuff like that, it'd be a good boat or back free wheels, especially on that stern being a little skinnier and it, it has a nice planning hole for surfing for 360 spinning rock spinning that kind of thing so you know as playable as you can get in a creek boat i think it does pretty well the highest rating i want to give this is for creaking i want to say 9.5 and the reason i uh, say of such a high rating is because this thing excels on a creek again i've had on some different things in colorado did really well on those kind of steep creeks where you have to get over stout ledges and things like that and tight turns it's very maneuverable and agile. It's light on its feet. And this bow will keep you high and dry, of course, the, all the walk bows do. But again, Rod, what I really like for creaking is the stern. You can lean boof on this thing, stern boof, whatever y'all want to call it. And you can really get some nice carving ability 
with the nice edges it has. And again, it's safe. It's a lot of room in there. You can get out if you really did get pinned, but the eyes are getting pinned in this boat or slim unless you're sideways just due to the bow rocker and all that stuff. I think for creaking, I would take this thing just about anywhere. For my size, it's you can handle a lot of stout water. I want to say down river, like big water, I wasn't a huge fan of it, at least for my size. And I don't know if I'm not engaging the rails all the way back here. I felt it to be a bit slow and get pushed around a lot. Again, it could have to do with my weight. So take for that what it's worth. The other thing, like I mentioned before, I do not like this flat bow. It does fine when you're going through ledge holes and things like that. But the big, big wave holes, what I found was the bow wasn't quite, it didn't quite get over the holes and the water would come over this flat bow and just slam you in the chest and slow the, slow the boat down a lot. And that happened quite often on our trip when on the big water runs. I didn't like that at all. It wasn't so much the hit on the chest, more so it slowed the boat down. If you wanted to get to another spot, it was a real difficult time. That's one thing, I, again, I wish they would have made this a little bit more rounded here so the water sheds off to one side if you do, if the water does come over that bow. But I felt like I got pushed around a little bit, like I said, in big, big water. Now, I know the walk of people, they take this stuff on the tum water and everything huge. Occasionally, the bow would get away from me being big. It would get pushed around while the water, I turned around some. I think it's worth it's worth, but again, I would say 7.5 for, for downriver for me. I, I prefer it as more of a creek boat. All right, so why buy the stoke? First off, if you're a Waka fan and you are kind of, you're in the OG or Steez and you're not quite maybe big enough for those, this is definitely, even though it's a bigger boat with 92 gallons, it feels like more of a small medium in my opinion for my size. I thought it was going to be so huge that I, I would hate it, but I actually really like the boat. So for a smaller paddler, in the if you're loving Waka or even looking at a small medium type boat and at my size, this is a good one to look at. It fits that range very well. So I think anywhere from again like 120 to 170, 180 is a prime for this. I know people over 200 the paddle it, but a smaller paddler that you're too small for some smalls or too, too small for the medium and too big for some smalls, this boat would fit in that little niche of kind of this medium. Another reason I would buy it is just a phenomenal creek boat. Uh, phenomenal. I felt really, feels really stable. It's really forgiving on primary and secondary stability. It's easy to roll. It goes over big holes. It does a lot of stuff very well. Like I said, my only negative was when you hit those big wave holes, sometimes they'll come over, but everything else is very well. It's agile and moves on its feet and it's easy to maneuver in those tight areas on a creek and things like that. When you come down off of a drop, you can really get a nice boost stroke with this thinned out stern and just keep on going down. If you're looking for a creek boat, this is definitely a good, very, very good option, especially in my weight range. And one last thing about kind of why you'd want to buy this boat, it's good for all range of abilities. I think even if you're a beginner, you could, it's not a boat you really have to like stay on aggressively paddle, but you also can do that and it performs well. So no matter if you're a beginner or advanced paddler, you can get in this thing as a beginner. It, like I said, it's very forgiving and friendly and paddle and be just fine. Or you can be a super advanced paddler and use those sharp edges and planing hole and aggressive nature and paddle it hard and maybe use it as a race boat or for that harder whitewater. So in that essence, you can grow in this boat from beginner to advanced if you wanted to do that. A lot of some creek boats, you know, they're either really good for beginners or really good for advanced boaters. I think this kind of falls in that overall category is anybody could paddle it and then grow and learn from it. Again, this is the Walk and Stoke. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you got any questions, let me know. If you're interested in one, contact Kaliva. And I uh, thank you for, I want to thank um, Steve at Kaliva for this boat because he hooked me up with it. And we had a good trip to Colorado in it. And check out my, I'll, I'll post some video footage of this on some different rivers following this review up so you can kind of see how it does. I'm not a big fan of talking while I'm on the river. I can't think as good as Wade while I'm like actually paddling the boat. I got to sit down and process what I'm thinking of. So, There'll be some commentary when I'm paddling, but just kind of watch this review and then watch how it does on different runs. And yeah, for sure, demo one for yourself if you're interested. If you got any more questions, let me know. See you on the next one.